Hello and welcome to the CNBC TV 18 HDFC Sky Election Headquarters. I'm Sonal Bhutra and with me is Vivek Ayer. We are continuously getting in updates, more updates actually, on what's happening with the election outcome. So we are getting that for you. Meanwhile, the markets have come up from the highs, but we do have a lot of moving parts in the broader markets. You're absolutely right. Quite a lot happening as far as the broader end of the markets are concerned. In fact, uh, you know, it's another day where we've seen strong gains. Cooled off a little bit from the day side, but strong gains nevertheless. An action packed show for you. Let's start off with the top headlines. Market off morning highs, but stocks gain on expectations of the NDA's return and policy continuity despite coalition compulsions. PSU stocks lead the charge besides utilities, realty and capital goods. Mid caps outperform. You know, Minda up over 14% actually is adding on to those gains after it partners with an automotive company to strengthen electric four-wheeler product portfolio in India. Company will manufacture and sell high-voltage category EV products for passenger and commercial vehicles. Century Textile surges in trade after signing a JV with Barmalt India for luxury residential group housing project in Gurugram. The project offers revenue potential of 5,000 crores for the company. Positive commentary from Jefferies on housing financial companies like Avas, Home First and Canfin Homes boost stocks. Brokers say the new government at Centre may announce revamped affordable housing scheme in budget. RVNL clocks in a new order win and NPCC snaps up orders of just under 500 crore. The wins and NDA's expected returns fuel optimism on CAPEX. Meanwhile, IEX gains on the back of a good business update in May. All right, those are the top headlines. Uh, let's take a look at what the markets are doing right now. The Nifty is up 150 points, but remember it's around 140 points off from the day's high. It has been quite volatile in the last couple of uh, trading minutes. And if we talk about the highs of the day, it was 22,910. So there's been some pullback from those levels. The Bank Nifty is the one which is underperforming. Yes, it is in the green, but it's underperforming the benchmarks up around three tenths of a percent. Um, for a brief period, it slipped into the red as well, but it has recovered from those levels. Uh, the mid caps, they continue to do well, 2% higher there. The advanced decline ratio is solid in favor of the advances. In fact, on the NSE, the advanced decline ratio is 7 is to 1, and on the BSE, it's 3 is to 1, and a lot of moving parts, a lot of news flow that's coming by, a lot of order wins in your space, <laughs> and policy changes in the space that I track. <laughs> well, order wins policy changes for you and uh, operational updates from IEX, you know, so space is entirely mm -hmm. buzzing, the power, the gas, the utility space. Uh, uh, but, you know, just had a look at the screen a couple of minutes ago and something very interesting popped up uh, on the day of the, you know, the counting. We actually saw 7% and 8% downtick as far as the mid cap and small cap indices were concerned. And out of the four trading sessions in the week, one particular day itself saw a 7%, 8% downtick. But what's actually happened, you know, post today's up move in the mid cap and the small cap, as well as the NSE 500 space, is that all of these indices have actually managed to go ahead and are now trading positive for the week gone by in these four trading sessions. Of course, you know, we still have uh, a day and a half uh, yet to go and today's expiry, so I expect more volatility in the second half as well. What's moved most this week as far as the NSE 500 is concerned? Some names, you know, look at KNR Constructions, look at uh, FMCG names like Imami, United Spirits, Credit Access. These are the stocks, you know, that have done very well, up 10%, in fact, KNR up over 20%. Coming to the NSE mid-cap index, look at names like Max Healthcare, look at names like Supreme Industries, one particular stock that stands out is ABFRL, Sun TV, as well as Persistent System. Sun TV, of course, you know, do is linked to the election outcome. But we have a lot more stocks on the radar where Hormas has been looking at the screen. This is our special segment, Mid-Cap Movers. Hormas, take it away. You know, the good part of having so many stocks listed is you can say a few and I can say a few as well. So it's all even Stevens and the broader markets are doing well, even though the benchmarks are struggling a little this afternoon. And I'll start off with the gainers from the broader market space. And you just highlighted Uno Minda. That is a trading at a record high this afternoon. That one point it had even crossed the mark of a thousand rupees, it's up 14%. KNR Constructions, as you just highlighted, is up 17%. Century Textiles, another 12% today. Keynes Tech is up another 9%. So a good day for a lot of these stocks. But what we're not having a good day is were some defense PSUs. Even as the PSU space recovered a little yesterday, these three names were still taking it on the chin, were down almost 10% yesterday. But now there is a, some bit of recovery coming in for shipbuilders. Cochin Shipyard, Garden Reach up 10% each. Bharat Dynamics off the highs of the day, but still trading with gains of 5 
5%. The broader PSU space continues to see recovery as we speak. BHL after the order win is up 9%. REC, IRCTC, HAL is doing well as is PFC. But REC and PFC are still significantly off the highs that they had made earlier this week before that 25% sell-off on Tuesday. Stocks that are doing well from the real estate space, that is one sector that has been buzzing this afternoon as well. Brigade is up 10.5%. Macrotech off the day's high. Conversely to Brigade, which is at the day's high, Sobha is up 6% as is Prestige Estates. Almost all constituents of the real estate index trading with gains. Stocks that are doing well on the back of strong volumes and those are include Avanti Feeds, the shrimp related stocks doing well, 8.5% higher for Avanti Feeds, Home First Finance, Eris Life and Devyani International. There was a small block deal as well that took place in the stock today. It's up 4.5% as well. And lastly, some stocks that are not doing well in today's trading session, bucking the trend. Sun TV they had a good few days. Now it's seeing some profit booking. Vijaya Diagnostics, Honasa Consumers and Avenue Supermarts, FMCG, the star of yesterday, now is seeing some profit profit booking after the rally. Back to you guys. Okay, all right. That's a long and exhaustive list. Thank you so much for joining us, Ormaz. A lot of interesting movers in the broader markets that we've been seeing today. But it's a good time to get a technical check on the markets. Let's welcome Samit Chavan for just that. Samit, good afternoon. Thank you so much for uh, joining us. Do you think we'll see more cuts now on the Nifty from the highs at least because the last hour could be very crucial and volatile considering the weekly options expiry? Uh, good afternoon, Sonal. Uh, see, uh, as far as you know, index is concerned, in the last couple of days, we have seen a remarkable recovery from the uh, you know, lows of 21,300 uh, that uh, we had seen on the uh, Tuesday election verdict day. Uh, uh, now, going ahead, you know, uh, all the politi political developments over the next uh, few days is likely to uh, trigger some you know, wild swings in the market. As far as uh, levels are concerned, uh, as of now, we don't see Nifty surpassing 20,000 in a hurry. So probably it is likely to spend some time around this level. So the range would be slightly wider, despite the fact you know Vix is now Vix has now fallen below 20 mark. But uh, you know look at the kind of uh, uh, intraday swings that we are witnessing. So we expect a Nifty to now oscillate within the range of 20,000, 20,000 uh, you know before it giving a decisive move in the ideal direction. Uh, as far as Bank Nifty is concerned, Bank Nifty uh, you know, has a strong resistance around 49,500 to 49,800. And as of now, you know, there are no uh, uh, you know, indications that Bank Nifty would surpass this important level. So for Bank Nifty, the uh, you know, range would be 49,700 uh, on the higher side. And lower side, there's a strong support around 48,000 to 47,800 now. So we expect uh, you know, uh, some sort of you know, volatility to continue in next few days also. Uh, so it would be specific, stock specific, uh, uh, you know, moment that uh, one has to track. And there are, you know, a lot of spaces like, you know, defensive spaces like IT, uh, they are showing good traction. So one should uh, keep focusing on such, uh, you know, themes. Uh, Samit, uh, you spoke about individual stocks. Uh, you've also mentioned the IT spacing a bit of a bounce back. Uh, individual stocks, what's on your radar? What are your top picks for today? Uh, so we have one buy and one sell. Buy obviously, uh, you know, the IT space on the IT space. TCS, TCS, uh, you know, has been uh, 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 correcting off late uh, from the levels of 13 and 38 has tasted its lower end of its, uh, you know, downward sloping channel around 3600. Now it is showing some good traction in this counter. So we expect uh, TCS to head towards 1300, 1320 over the next few days. It can be bought at current level, keeping a stop loss around 3760. The short would be on Axis Bank. Uh, you know, Axis Bank. Uh, uh, after a decent correction on uh, Tuesday, we are saying we have already seen a good recovery in this counter. Now it has reached its important resistance level. Uh, so one can short Axis Bank with a stop around you know eleven ninety eight. One should keep a strict stop loss. Uh, the target to watch out for would be around eleven. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Samit, for joining us today. Couple of more stocks that you should keep on your radar from the broader markets. Uh, of course, uh, Hormaz did speak about them. Uh, Marathon Next Gen, that is a stock from the realty space, which is up around 20%, locked in upper circuit. We also have India Pesticides. This is from the agrochemical space. This is one stock which hasn't been doing so well. But last two trading sessions, it has been continuously locked in upper circuit. So that stock is up another 10% as we speak. So uh, look at that. There's no fresh trigger that we have here but yes that's a 10% higher uptick that we are seeing on this one we'll slip into a short break when we come back we'll get you more on the markets and stock specific actions so stay tuned for that
Welcome back to Midcap Radar. Well, uh, one particular sector that's been underperforming lately, but today seeing a bit of a bounce back, is the entire IT pack. So if you look at names like OFSS, Oracle Financial, if you look at names like Mastec, if you look at names like Wipro, uh, Coforge Persistent Systems, a lot of the Midcap IT stocks today are actually giving a decent bounce from levels where they've been sold off quite uh, aggressively in the last couple of trading sessions. But uh, one particular stock that's on our radar today is the BSE, which is the Bombay Stock Exchange. This is on the back of a news update. SEBI has formed an expert panel for clearing corporations. Sudarshan joins in with more details. So first, talking about the news, SEBI this week has formed a panel led by former RBI Deputy Governor Usha Thorat to examine ownership structure and finances of clearing corporations. So first, talking about ownership structure, panel to suggest feasibility of broadening the list of eligible investors to take stake in clearing corporations. It will examine the need for altering caps on shareholding of entities and alternatives should keep in view periodic capital needs of a clearing corporation. On finances, panel will suggest need for review of current structure of levying of clearing charges or fees and preparedness of clearing corporations to cover capital expenditure and investments. And currently, BSC owns 100% stake in its clearing arm that is ICCL which is known as Indian Clearing Corporation Limited and in FY24 ICCL contributed 28% to BSE's revenue and almost 32% to profit before tax and factoring all this Jefferies has come out with a note it maintains hold call with a target of rupees 3100 per Per share, it says better pricing market share in clearing can keep its margin high for a longer period and it had recently adjusted Q4 growth in fees and clearing income to drive 1.3% EPS hike for FY25-27. So this is the reason BSE is in focus and in today's trade, it's trading with a gain of almost 2%. Okay, all right. That's about BSC. But Sudarshan, hold on. There is uh, some focus on the back of some brokerage notes as well. Post the election outcome, CLSA is paused on CapEx plays, while Jefferies is talking about affordable housing maybe getting a boost. Tell us more about these. So brokers notes have started flowing, f flowing in and uh, considering the new government formation and it's re related to sectors that new government may focus on and the sectors that can be amongst priorities in upcoming budget. So firstly talking about CLSA on CapEx, it says channel checks suggest government's 100-day plan will hit the ground running and its 100-day plan agenda, large orders may be identified to be placed across infra and defense names and this large order placement would reassure investors and likely demand for more capex for two states, Andhra Pradesh and Bihar may help increase state capex as well. And CLSC believes LNT, IRB, HAL, NCC, J. Kumar Infra will be key, uh, key beneficiaries of increase in CapEx. Next is Jeffries on housing finance course. It expects government to announce revamped affordable housing scheme in upcoming budget. And revamped scheme could improve housing loan demand, special affordable and mid-cap segment. And earlier affordable housing segment had contributed 48% of home firsts and 23% of awards disbursements over FY18 to FY22. And large housing finance companies like LIC Housing and Canfin can also see tailwinds from the scheme if the loan cap in the new scheme is raised. Preferred picks for Jeffries are Home First and Avas in affordable segment and LIC Housing Fin and Canfin in the mid-ticket segment. Sudarshan, so thank you so much for that. You know, you've put the spotlight on uh, the infrastructure space as well as the housing finance space are uh, very helpful. Now, the next talk on the radar is Orchid Pharma. It's received the DCGI approval for an API back tip. Ekta joins us with more details. Thanks for that. Well, yes, uh, you know, Orchid Pharma is in focus because the DCGI, which is basically the Drug Controller General of India, has approved the formulation for uh, Emetizo back tip along with cefepime. So basically, this particular drug is going to be used to treat severe infections which are otherwise drug resistant, such as um, treatment of UTIs, hospital acquired pneumonia and others. Now, uh, remember that this is important news for Orchid because in Feb of 2024, they had announced that this was the first ever new chemical entity which was discovered by an Indian company to have received the US FDA nod and uh, they had outlicensed this drug long back to Alecra Therapeutics, which had then taken it finally to fruition. 
Now, the estimated global commercial peak sales are around 150 to 200 million dollars. Annual royalties from Orchid, um, you know, with their out licensing agree agreement that they have with Allegra, should come to around 12 to 16 million dollars. The size in India is estimated to be around 200 odd crores. Now, we did speak to the management. They did mention that it's currently uh, approved for three indications. They want to be judicious about the use. So, for example, they don't want it to be used as a first line of treatment. That means that if in case you get a UTI or a hospital-based pneumonia, this is not going to be the first drug that will be administered to you. If in case the, the drugs which are first administered do not work on the patient, that is when they will use this particular drug and hence they want to be judicious about it. Now, the DCGI has given approval based on what the global cl clinical trials have shown uh, and they, we do understand that uh, phase 4 clinical trials have been asked for by the DCGI. So overall, um, it could be an opportunity for ORCID but the scale up is going to be something that the street will watch out for. Okay, all right. 8% uh, higher. It is actually at the day's high. Thank you so much, Ekta, for joining us with all those details. Moving on now, CG Power will foray into consumer business by selling appliances. That's the word coming in from Murugappa Group's Vela and Subaya. Speaking to Shireen Bhan from the sidelines of the EY World Entrepreneur Awards in Monte Carlo, where he's representing India, Subaya said that he was betting big on electric mobility and semiconductor business. However, he ruled out any acquisitions in the near future and bets on organic growth and partnerships. A new business that we're adding and that makes is the consumer business uh, because a non-compete got over uh, in 2021. So that's, that continues to have a lot of opportunity. For the consumer business, we basically start with fans and pumps and kind of, you know, the, the more, more general electrical appliance areas and then look at new areas from, for growth beyond that. So for the first couple of years, we'll just be establishing a beachhead in those areas and then we'll start looking at what, what we can do from a growth perspective. Yes, so definitely, uh, you know, right now I don't see uh, any more need for acquisitions in that space. So it's a, now we've got enough of a base knowledge and we will develop on it. We might have partnerships, but no more acquisitions is what I believe. Uh, so like you said, we've launched a three-wheeler. We will launch a 55-ton electric truck. Uh, what we will also be doing over the, next, uh, over the next six to nine months is launching a small commercial vehicle, uh, starting with a 3.5-ton GVW and then looking at different payloads. Uh, and then uh, we will also hopefully over the next 12 to 18 months launch uh, our tractor. And I do believe that uh, both, both those products have a, have a larger propensity to move to electric. And so that's, that's going to be our big bet. I think the semiconductor industry is really going to, uh, going to mushroom in India. I think there's a lot of potential for it. Uh, just because of the, the, the raw horsepower we have in terms of intellectual capacity, uh, almost 20% of the world's semiconductor design engineers uh, are, uh, are Indian, right? Uh, so I do feel like that sector uh, has tremendous potential in India and it's a sector that I, I personally am, am, again, very, very optimistic about in terms of the opportunities for the country. Okay, all right. Uh, it's time to put focus on some more stocks which are in the news. IX is surging in trade. It's been a strong business update for the month of May. Uh, Vivek, give us more details. The stock has come slightly off the highs, but uh, what are the internals looking like? Well, uh, you know, first up, you know, IEX is actually the short-term power exchange. And uh, every month, the company gives an update as to how exactly operations have panned out and how exactly have volumes panned out. So for the month of May, what's actually transpired is that the company has seen a very strong uptick as far as volumes are concerned. This is largely along expected lines, given the fact that we had a very harsh summer. And typically during harsh summers, uh, the kind of demand that is seen in the short-term power market is a lot higher. 29% uptick as far as total volumes are concerned. Now talking about the core electricity volumes, it was up 21%, coming in at the 9,568 million units mark. Now what's very interesting is that the day ahead market price, typically, you know, which goes higher along with the prices, this time around, it's come off quite significantly. So the DAM clearing price was at 5.3 rupees a unit. The company says that this is almost a 20% discount versus what are the typical bilateral contracts. So what the company intends to say is that it's a lot cheaper for discounts to go ahead and actually buy power uh, from, uh, you know, on the short-term power exchange, uh, whereas doing it against a bilateral contract. Now the company says they expect to see further sell-side liquidity. There are government rules that indicate that surplus power should come onto the short-term exchanges, increasing fuel supply, as well as higher availability of general units, of generating units. And this is why they like IEX. 
All right, so that's not it actually. BHEL and NBCC, they are also buzzing in trade today. Uh, tell us more, a lot of order wins coming through. Well, that's right. So, you know, every time we talk about BHEL, order wins are coming in thick and fast. Uh, India continues to have significant thermal capex outlay. And on the back of that BHEL, right now, if you look at it, it's one of the sole, in fact, it's the sole large thermal company that continues to make and supply for power plants. LNT at this point of time is not very aggressive in bidding. So now what's actually happened as far as BHL is concerned is that overnight the company has informed the exchanges that they have received two orders. Now both of these orders are from Adani Power subsidiaries. One order is in the state of Uttar Pradesh where the company would be supplying equipment as well as O&M uh, over and this particular size of this order is over 3500 crore. Now the other order that the company has received is again in the state of Chhattisgarh, very similar uh, internals and the size there too is 3500 crore. So 7000 crore worth of order wins is what the company has received, taking the order book over the 1.3 lakh crore mark. Now talking about NBCC, again, order wins over there, 491 crores worth of order wins that the company has received and this is in the routine course of business is what the company is saying. All right. Okay. So as we've been pointing out, it's a very busy day in terms of individual stocks which are buzzing around. But we'll do one thing. We'll slip into a short break. When we come back, we'll talk to you more about markets and stock-specific action on the other side. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Well, a lot of action in the broader markets and Century Textiles is one of them. The stock is up over 12% and uh, it is that real estate play despite it being a textile player as well. Uh, the company has announced that Billa Estates, which is the 100% subsidiary of Century Textiles, has in entered into a joint venture with Baumalt India Private Limited. They will be developing 13.27 acre of land parcel for a luxury residential group housing in Gurugram. Remember, NCR as a market is seeing a lot of growth, is seeing a lot of attraction coming in from other players as well. So that continues to be the case here as well. Development potential of approximately 2.4 million square feet and it has a revenue potential of around 5,000 crore rupees. So that is the number that the street really likes. Their expansion plan, especially in NCR, which is a growing uh, real estate market right now. Remember, the stock is already up 67% in this year so far. So we'll, uh, we'll see the expansion plans as is something that the street continues to like. Well, thank you so much for highlighting that 67% in 2024. That's outstanding. And uh, maybe, you know, the company will have to look at changing its name given the fact that it has uh, so much of real estate assets now. But the other stock on the radar is Hindustan Aeronautics. It's buzzing in trade today after it inaugurated a facility to support ISRO program. CLSA 2 has issued a note on the stock. Upasana is here with more details. ISRO chairman inaugurates HAL facilities to support LVMG programs. Mind you, currently the existing capacity allows only two LVM3 launches per year. This facility will support the production of six LVM3 rockets per year. And mind you, post-election results, CLSA had written a note on defence sector, wherein it has retained outperform rating on HAL with a target price of 4,731. It says that the expensive valuations leave little space for execution error. Company has also given a EBITDA margin guidance of 32 to 33 percent in next two years. And for FI25, the company is guiding for a order book of 47,000 crores, excluding the MRO division. As of 31st March 2024, the company's order book stands in excess of 94,000 crores. And company says that it is confident of maintaining FI24 growth momentum on the back of robust order book and strong order pipeline. Thank you so much for that, Upasna, you know, giving sense and making sense of how exactly HAL's prospects are. The next company on our radar is Unominda. The stock is surging today, and this is on the back of its partnership that the company has announced with Silha Innovens Automotive to go ahead and strengthen its electric four-wheeler portfolio. Earlier today, we spoke to Sunil Bora, the group CFO of Unominda, to discuss more on this development. 20%. Uh, will definitely be a, a number, maybe 2030 or 32, because what we see as of now, there are projections of 17% by 30, 20% by 30. Some Everybody has different assumptions. And that's why I said, normally we don't uh, comment on uh, the penetration or the volumes. But yes, as we move forward, we, I'm sure market will see at some time 20% penetration as well. In terms of uh, margins, uh, I would say a little early to comment on because as of now, volumes are very less. 
But as you move over, uh, forward, as you build scale, as you achieve those kind of revenues, we do expect the margins to be broadly in line with our average margins. But yes, they are as of now a little lower. Well, a very interesting conversation there with you, Nominda. Brokerages have been very upbeat on this particular development itself. Uh, both Kotaka uh, institutional equities as well as Nomura believe that that is something that will do quite well for the company going forward. But that's all the time we have on this edition of Midcap Radar, Mutual Fund Corner, when we return. <laughs>